Here is another nice, interesting case. We can see a really nice spleen here, can't we? We can see a smooth surface. We don't know how big it is, but we could suspect it's bigger than it should be because it appears to be filled with something. Please note that the uh, classical spleen is always described as red pulp and white pulp, and the redder areas represent areas where there are more sinusoids, the site of uh, RBC destruction, and the whiter areas generally are the areas surrounding blood vessels, which are more likely to have a lymphoid tissue. There are a lot of little white pulp areas here, aren't there? There are very little here. And not only are there a lot of white pulp areas, but some of them are very big. So you might suspect that this spleen uh, should have more uh, lymphoid uh, tissue in it than it should. And this is really a terrific way of uh, telling if, for example, a spleen is involved with lymphoma or leukemia or other hematologic malignancy, like uh, they often are. Let's take a look at uh, the peripheral smear on this patient. And let's take a look at a normal peripheral smear. I'm going to make three clicks on the normal peripheral smear. One, two, three. Even though we haven't identified all these cells precisely, I want you to get the general feel for the ratio between the white cells and the red cells. There's probably 30, 40 at most white cells in this area, and all the rest of them are red cells. It looks like it might be 100 or 1,000 to 1 ratio. However, in the peripheral smear of the patient with that big spleen with the prominent uh, white pulp, I'm going to make three clicks on his peripheral smear also. And notice how there is perhaps five or ten times more white cells than red cells compared to the normal control. And why is that? Or perhaps the first question would be, what are the increased cells? Well, if you look very closely, I think I can convince you that here, 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 here. Almost all of these cells are fairly mature or fairly normal looking lymphocytes. The reason for this tremendous increase in white cell count is because the uh, blood is filled with lymphocytes. You wouldn't want to call this a lymphocyte or this one or this one because you're not supposed to identify the cell if you can't see the cytoplasm. Um, notice we still have some platelets here as well. This is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. You can make very confidently the diagnosis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia if you know the patient's total lymphocyte count and their age. And one rule of thumb, even though this has changed by some of the purists who seem to uh, be very prominent in the field of hematology, is that if you have a person uh, that's in their 50s or 60s and they have a sustained lymphocyte count of 20,000 or more, you can diagnose chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Even if they look like totally normal lymphocytes, you don't have to do a bone marrow, although you may want to do it for other reasons. But that's how you make the diagnosis of CLL. Sustained lymphocytosis of 20,000 or more in a, an elderly person, which is defined as my age, someone in their 50s or 60s, let's say. Thank you very much.